receive all the praises. Thank you. We love you, King. We love. We love you, King. We love you, King Jesus. We love you, King of Glory. Thank you, Jesus. We adore your name. We magnify your name. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
glorious God.
Nalia ni yoko wa ni bwana Yesu namjua Alia mwamba Alia ni yoko wa ni bwana sema sema namjua Alia mwamba Alia ni yoko ni bwana Yesu sema sema namjua Alia mwamba Alia ni yoko Wonderful greetings to each and every one of you watching us live. We praise the Lord for this amazing opportunity. Thank you for that amazing time of worship. I thank God that we worship a God that is not restricted and we can worship him from anywhere. My name's uh, Reverend Paul Achilles and I bring you greetings from Nairobi. I want to thank the leadership of the ministry for allowing me the opportunity to come and bring the word of God this evening. I believe that the Lord has a plan for each and everything that happens around the face of the earth. And much as we know that our world is being redefined, it is needful to say that nothing has taken God by surprise. And so if you are watching us and you're wondering what is going to happen next, it is better to follow along with the reality that God is never caught off guard. Maybe you were, maybe I was, but our God is always on point. And so according to the theme of the, of the month, but the Lord, I want to look at a topic that the Lord laid in my heart, that the promise still counts. That is my word that I want to share with us this evening. I believe that for us that are in Christ, 
the Lord gave us a promise. And sometimes we wonder what is going to happen. But this evening, I want to come, I come to tell you that the promise still counts. For those that may never have a relationship with him, I need to let you know that he is aware that he created you. He's always been waiting for you. Because that promise is not just for selected few. That promise is for everybody that would be willing to actually take heed to his word. And I just wonder if you ever come to a point that somebody gave you, promised you something. And you thought it was going to be the next day. And then time lapsed on. And then the promise never came. And you began to actually second guess. Was he really serious or not? And in the course of that wondering, which is our human nature, because especially in this modern world, we want something that is immediate and now. We, need, we live in instant life. There is a drive-in, there is a take-out, there is everything at the press of your fingertips. And unfortunately, in faith, it doesn't necessarily work like that. So, maybe somebody gave you a promise, and sometimes you wondered, was it really serious? Time went on, day one, it turned into weeks, and then months, but still nothing. You kept hoping. And as time dragged on, you began to make plans. And now, for some of us, we live with the consequences of the plans that we made. But I have good news that the law that we serve and the God we believe in is a God of a second chance. And even though it doesn't matter what you might have done, it still looks out for you and it looks out for me. And I'm encouraged by a character in the Bible by the name Abraham. And I want to get to our reading this day because this month's life really re remains a beacon of encouragement and hope for what God can do through a person. I'm reading from the book of Genesis chapter 17. Reading from verse 1 all the way through 9 and then we will jump to verse 15 to, 21, to 22. Now I'm reading, reading from the King James. The Bible says, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to, him, to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you. And will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold my covenant is with you. And you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham. But your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I will give you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout the generations. Verse 15. Then God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be from her. Then Abram fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, who is 99 years old, bear a child? Shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And Abram said, O oh God, that Ishmael might live before you. Then God said, No, 
Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this set time next year. Then he finished talking with him and wept up from Abraham. Lord, we thank you for your word this evening. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will make it plain so that we can understand. And that, Lord, your word will not return to you void. But may it accomplish that which you've intended for us, even for those that are watching, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, we are reading the story of Abraham. And I believe this is worth considering, especially the times that we're living in. When the year began, I will, we started the year with a lot of gusto. We had a promise of what God gave us. We had expectations of what we were going to look towards. And then COVID happened. And let I tell you, each and everyone, that much as catastrophic COVID might be, I still believe that God has a plan in all things. We might wonder about the good that is going to come out of it. But I am here to tell you that the promise still counts. God never started a journey with anyone in vain. He has never failed to bring to conclusion what he has started. Every time God begins something, he knows the end from the beginning. And so in the life of Abraham, when God has spoken to him, this is now 13 years later that Abraham has not heard from God. There, and he's made a lot of things. It's 13 years later, God has not spoken to him. And the last time he heard from God was through Agar, that was Agar, the maid servant that was fleeing with their son Ishmael and this man I believe he lived wondering God you gave me a promise that you will make me you will that through me of the nations of the earth will be blessed it has been such a long time I've not heard your voice and some of us through this time that we're going through maybe we have even lost a touch of that we no longer hear his voice because everywhere I see around the world all that we are told are figures and data. And every evening when you sit before the news, all that we see is today, such many people contacted COVID. And almost fear is terrorizing the world. I want to encourage each and every person wherever you are, that it is time to let faith arise instead of fear. The devil's gr ground is fear in each and every person. Every evening as you sit and you watch the news, you wonder, is it safe to go out? Well, truth be told, it doesn't matter how many have COVID because as at this moment, there's no treatment for it. And so whether we have it or not, our life is in God's hands. It might happen to the best of us. But at the end of the day, how we prepare to meet up with this God? So I am not so worried about COVID. I know it is there. We will take the necessary precautions as we have been given by the different governments. We will submit to what they've given us. But I will continue praising my God. Because I know at the end of the day, only God can help me. Not my government. There's not one person sitting on this planet on the, in the world that can actually give you life. It is only God. When he says enough is enough, it is enough. And so here is Abraham, this man of faith. 13 years no hearing from God. He has raised 13 and all that he has is a reminder that God said, I will make you a heir. And this child came from their house maid servant. 13 years after the promise, Agar, um, Sarah is still barren. And at this moment, I believe his faith was going down and the Lord comes and speaks to him. And I want to say to you, that my first point this evening to each and everyone is that God is almighty. The first thing that God says to Abraham when he, say, when he comes to him, he says, I am the Lord. When he's 99 years old, he says, I am the Lord 
God Almighty. What does it mean? It says, I am Jehovah El Shaddai. I am Jehovah All, All Sufficient. I am your everything that you will need. And through this period, most families have been affected in one way or the other. Companies and industries have been affected in one way or the other. But I'm here to tell you that God still declares, I am the Lord Almighty. So can we believe this Almighty God that COVID has not caught him by surprise and that in the midst of this, he still has a plan because he knows you by name. He has you written in the palms of his hands and he created each and every one of you. And I am so tired listening to the news because the news doesn't define for me what God has for me. I want to hear what God has for me even now. I am not saying do not be informed. It is good to be informed. But can we balance that knowledge with the reality of what God is saying? And so God says, I am the Lord Almighty. And in Isaiah 45, verse 5, he de the, Isaiah declares that I am the Lord and there is none else besides me. God Almighty. The creator of the universe and the earth. The one who created you and me. Whether you know him or you don't. You are a creation of his work. You are supposed to manifest his glory. He comes to him and says to him, I am almighty God. And I want to, I want to say to each and every one of you, look up to the almighty God. Don't look to the catastrophe and the damage that is happening around the world. I am not saying deny it. No, no, no. I'm not saying be in denial. I'm saying whereas COVID is a reality, whereas the world is on reset, whereas things are changing, but God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. And he's still almighty. And whether COVID is there, the sun will still rise. And night will still come. And another morning will still come. And God's work will yet continue. Because he is God and not dependent on man. And so my second point is what he says to Abraham. He says to him, walk before me. It goes on to say, walk before me and be blameless. I don't think God is saying to Abraham, be without any fault. But he's looking at him and he's saying, I want you to live life with your eyes set on me. Set your heart towards me. He's saying to him, now me reading through the scriptures, he's saying to him, Abraham, I know where you have been through. I know what you've gone through. I understand your doubts. But I want you to know, I am the one who spoke it. And I will still finish it. Paul writes in the New Testament, Philippians 1.6, and he says that he is able, he who started the good work in you, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God doesn't start a project that he doesn't complete. This universe, this world, is God's project. And God has an agenda for it. These lives on the universe are part of God's plan. God has an agenda for it. And all that God is asking of us is set your heart towards him. Set your eyes towards him. Many people believed in so many things, but with the reset and the shaking, we are now desperate. And when you consider statistics around the world, they will tell you that relationship have, relationships have been seriously challenged. Suicides have gone up. Why? Because frustration. Considering that what some of us hoped would make this life meaningful and relevant has turned the other way around. It doesn't have meaning any longer. And so he says to him, walk before me and be perfect. I believe one thing that God is doing is sanitizing his body. It is time, not only that because World Health says sanitize, but God is sanitizing his body. I believe when this season passes, we will know who are the real believers and who are the fakes. 
I believe that when this season is over, there will be a clear demarcation in terms of those who are for God and those who are not for God. Because God is busy doing something in his body. He wants those with a heart set towards him. And he will make an appearance to them and say, walk before me. So he makes an appearance to Abraham and says, walk before me and be blameless. Some people set their focus on so many different things. But Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. And I want to say to you, our pursuits at the end of the day, they will not take us anywhere. Because however much wealth we have gathered on the face of this earth, as I see corruption being exposed, as I see leaders taking advantage of their citizens, as I see people crying desperately because they need God, because they don't have anybody that will speak on their behalf, I want to say to them, there is still hope in God. Because at the end of the day, the Lord will remember you. And you who has taken what is not yours, need I say to you, at the end of the day, it is six foot under, or you are burnt and scattered to the four winds, and you take nothing with you. So we are here on borrowed time. But God is sovereign and overall. What he requires for, from us is to walk before him and be blameless. But not just walking before him. My third point that I want to bring across is he says, worship, worship before him. We need to reverence the presence of God. So where I have read, the Bible says, when the Lord appeared to Abraham in verse 3, Abraham fell on his face and talked with God. It is not the first time God is making an appearance to Abraham, but it is the first time Abraham falls on his face. There is a first time for everything. And I want to believe that even through this journey, as we come to this point of the year, maybe it would be your first time to consider the reality of God's existence on this earth. Maybe it is time to consider that there is a God who speaks from heaven, and that you need to listen to what he has to say. Maybe it is time for you to consider that this life that you have belongs to someone that has an agenda for it. When Abraham suddenly, God makes an appearance, 13 years later, the promise is still pending, the wife is still barren, nothing has changed, the child of the main servant has grown, is now a teen, and his clock is 99 years, is long past menopause. Any doctor will tell you they don't give birth at 90. They are non-productive. They are dead. And the wife is 90 years old, and God still comes and says, Abraham, I am the almighty God. God comes to assure him that with me, all things are possible. God comes to assure him that Abraham, I still got your back. I said, want to tell somebody this evening that God's got your back. They might lay you down through the shaking that is happening, but God still got your back. So hold on with Christ. Abraham now bows down and worships him. And I love what the psalmist writes. He says in, Isaiah, in Psalms 95 or 6, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. And I want to say to each and everyone, wherever you are, even though you might not be allowed to congregate as a body, but that doesn't deter you from bowing before the presence of the Almighty God. It is time to light fires in our homes. It is time to light fires on the altars of God that are allowed. For those that can congregate, I honor and salute the men of God that in faith have said, we will stand with God even through this time. Because fear has not kept them at bay. It is time, the king, the, the, in Matthew, the Bible says, Jesus speaking, he says, the kingdom of God, since the time of John the Baptist, suffers violence and the violent men Take it by force. Sometimes I think COVID is overrated. From the beginning of this year, the number one top cause of death is abortion at 22 million. Ponder that for a minute. For a minute. Abortion, 22 million. 
to this moment. But because of 578 deaths and 13 million infections of which 7 million have recovered, the church can no longer congregate. I think the church is at war. And we need to take this thing into the spiritual. Such that the Lord our God will give us the direction to take. But I am tired of the lies when you look at the figures. And they're not my own figures. Go to WHO World Site. Dig it up for yourself. And ask what are the top 10 causes of death globally. COVID will not be number one. It will not be number two. It will not be number three. Neither will it be number four. It will not. But because of it, we have a reason to keep people from worshipping. Because you know, and those people that are spiritual know, that there is power on a dedicated altar. No community since time immemorial has ever existed without a spiritual altar. Nobody. They know the power of the altar. And that is what is being taken away. And maybe somebody will nail me as being reckless and careless. It is okay, but my faith tells me that my God is more than able. Back to Abraham. He calls us to worship. I'm saying point three, worship before him. Reverence his presence. Are you worshiping God? Or what are you doing? My fourth point, it is time to get personal. It is time to get personal with God. Because what God told you, only you know. The journey where you guys began, only you know. Nobody else knows that. Only you. And so you need to get personal with him. I believe God is not just omniscient. He's not just omnipresent. He's not just omnipotent, but he is also omnipersonal. To each and every person of the 7 billion people around the world, God knows you all by name whether you know him. He's omnipersonal. And so he looks at his body. And I'm saying it is time to get personal. And when we get personal with him, he comes to alleviate our fears as he came to give Abraham an assurance. And in that moment of getting personal, a few things happened. When we come to getting personal, that is our defining moments. I leave his presence not the same person that I used to be. But I leave his presence somebody different. When he began speaking to Abraham, Abraham was Abraham. Simply meaning exalted father without a child. For all his life, he was exalted father. And when he did his best, he ended up with Ishmael. Exalted father. Married to a barren woman, Sarai. But when he got personal with God and God came to him, God says to him, He says to him, let me read it for you. <clears throat> he says to him in verse 5, You shall, no longer shall your name be called Abram, but you shall be Abram. For I have made you a father of many nations. God changes his name from exalted father to a father of multitude. A father of many nations. And us as believers, as Christians, we take joy in the fact that he is our father. We carry the faith of Abraham with us. And not just was it for Abraham. He comes in verses 15 and talks about Sarai. He says, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And when we get personal with God, we get to learn the specifics. Every one of you, God has a specific agenda for you even through this period. It is now the first time that God defines for Abraham, saying in verse 6, I will make nations out of you. He says to him, kings shall come from you. Suddenly, this man through whom all the nations was to be blessed is being told, kings will come out of you. And I now I say to each and every person that in you lies greatness that God has deposited. You need to get personal with God for it to come out. 
get personal with God. I don't know whether you are whether kings are in your bosom. I don't know. And the same promise he says to Sarah, he says, he says to Sarai, I will bless her. She shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. So God looks at these people and he suddenly comes and realizes, although the world has termed them a certain terminology, but I am God, I am going to change their history. In this period, my heart goes out to pastors and servants, genuine servants of God that has faced the scorn of the world as they seek to take a stand for God. And I want to say to you, man and woman of God, keep on keeping up with God. Your call was not given by man, but by God to unlock nations. It was never given to anybody else. God selected certain people. He gave them a mandate and he works through them. And whereas the nations might mock, I want to say they will plot. The psalmist in some chapter to say, why do the nations rage against Christ and his anointed one? They want to cast away the church so that they don't hear his voice. But I am here to declare and say that it is time to rise up as the body of believers. Every hand on deck, God is in control. Now I want to finish by saying to you, the promise still counts. The promise still counts. God is all-knowing. He knew the calendar of what 2020 will be like. And so suddenly, he doesn't need to rethink, reorganize, and replan. It's you and me that need to reorganize, rethink, and replan, maybe because we lost our positioning. Maybe we lost a bit of our senses of hearing. But when we get that light moment, we will not remain the same. We will bow before him like Abraham. And Abraham in this, cha in this chapter, he laughs twice. The first, uh, he bows before God twice. The first time was in worship, in reverence of the presence of God that comes to give him an assurance. The second time was in laughter. And I want to say to somebody, you are about to laugh. Because even with COVID, God has you in mind. And his promise for you still stands. He will give you something that when you speak to your neighbors, they will say, you got to be crazy. How is it possible in this time? We serve a God of impossibilities. Impossible is his name. Because he makes all things possible. He's not defined by time. God can do within a single instance what has taken man years to build. And so I choose to hold on to God because his promise will never fail. And I want to encourage you wherever you are. It doesn't matter what is happening next to you. Take the necessary precautions as your governments and leaders have given it. But I need you to know God has your name on the palms of his hands. He'll never forget you. And when we know that God has our name, we can say with Jeremiah in verse, Jeremiah 32, 17, he says, Our Lord, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. There is nothing too hard for you. I believe in this season, so many things have gone forth, but God still remains on the throne. And there is nothing too hard for him. I think among the things that COVID that this season has exposed is just how desperate and wicked man is without God. And I want to ask you, you are watching us, you're listening to us. Are you a person of covenant with God? Or are you just hoping and walking through life, hoping that tomorrow comes? I want to challenge you. You need a relationship to enjoy a promise. Without a relationship, you can't get a promise. Nobody marries a woman that they don't have a relationship with. Because it is only 
in relationship that vows are exchanged. It is only in relationships that commitments are weighed. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you have a relationship with God? He died on the cross for you. He paid the ultimate price. You don't need to do anything more. And I, can't, I want to say to you that we all stand by grace because he gives us the strength. He wakes us up every other day. And where you are, your world has been shaking. I want to offer you Jesus. He cares for you. He's been watching you through the struggles, through your sicknesses. He's been watching you. And if you're there and you say, Lord, I need this relationship. I want to walk with him because I want to know his promise and his promise is for eternity. Then I want you just to bow your head for a word of prayer. And wherever you are, you can repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I hear your word. Tonight, this evening, I desire to be in relationship with you. I cannot manage my life on my own. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. And cleanse me with your blood. Take away my name from the books of condemnation. And write my name in the book of life. I have come that you reason together with me. And so that you will blot out my sin. I know they are red as red as crimson. But you say that you can make them as white as snow. Father, forgive me. In Jesus' name I pray. And Lord Jesus, this as we have, for those that have prayed, Father, I pray that you'll strengthen their faith. You'll cause them to grow in knowledge of your word and your will. And that they will find grace even through this time. Would you take charge in the throne of their lives? In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And I want to say thank you to those that have been watching us. And as you have listened with that word, I pray that it will bless you. Remember, his promise still counts. Go back to what he told you. And as you go back, reflect on it. And ask him what the next step is. Your government doesn't know. Your leaders don't know. The scientists cannot give us a conclusion. But he was there before the beginning of time. And he will be there long after time. Because he doesn't live in our dimension. Everything happens be, be within his space. Because he's the Alpha and the Omega. So you better get in touch with the Alpha and the Omega. And with that... I want to take this moment to sincerely thank each and every person that has faithfully been giving and supporting the work of the ministry. We pray the Lord's blessings upon you as you give your tithes and your offerings. And our contacts and details of how to give are going on on the screen. And I would encourage you to go there and actually support the work of God even through this time. Let me say to us all in conclusion, wherever you are, you are not forgotten. The Lord Jesus is still in control. And at the end of the day, he will stand out strong. And we are coming out of this stronger, better, and sharper for God. In Jesus' name, amen.